Hello and welcome back to the Nature Institute. Um, today we're here to talk a little bit about using digital tools to help you in your birding experience. So we have the, um, the backyard bird count coming up this weekend, February um, 13th and 14th. So in advance of that, we'd like to show you a little bit about um, how to use the eBird system. So we're back with a special guest, expert birder and longtime friend of TNI, Brent Schindewolf, who's going to go through, show you the eBird system and give you um, some advice, some tips about how best to use that. Greetings, and it's good to be back with the Nature Institute and uh, sort of a follow up to some of the things we've done in the, in the recent past in terms of bird feeders and uh, feeding of birds and that type of thing. And we've got a, a little opportunity here to prepare for the big backyard bird count. And uh, I'm really looking forward to being able to share some, some of the subtleties and uh, shortcuts that are involved with the eBird program. All you need to do to participate in this great backyard bird count, um, if you go onto the site, it will have this information for you. Um, but you are just going to keep track of these birds you see in your backyard. Of course, if you're able to get photos or audio, that's wonderful, um, but I don't think that's required. Um, and then once you have set up this free eBird account for yourself um, or using the Merlin app, you can um, uh, put in all of these sightings that you find um, and all of the sightings that you add during these dates, which is February 12th through 15th, this weekend, that will be added into the Great Backyard Bird Count project. And as Brent was saying, that will contribute um, to all of this great scientific research that's being done all over the world. You are either going to report the birds on site using Merlin or you're going to do what I do. And so I'll record birds in one of two ways. I'll record them with the uh, large notepad. Uh, there we go. I'll record birds with a large notepad um, as I'm sitting watching birds either from the front porch or walking around the land um, or even through the window on these very cold days. Uh, when I'm out in the field itself, uh, I'll use one of these shirt pocket notepads. But in either case, what I want to do is transcribe the information I get out in the field into the eBird -pro e program. So we'll go back to the program itself. So on the eBird program, if you look, you've got, you've got three things up at the top that I want to emphasize right off the bat. You've got the word submit, which is the most important for what we're doing right now, because if you press submit, you'll get the choice of all the locations where you have been if you've been on the program. What you need, what you need is to be able to locate your, your um, uh, well, your location, okay, and uh, or for any other county that, you're, that you may be in. When you, when you get the map then, rather than showing the entire state or even the United States, it narrows it at least down to county. And then you look for your location. And obviously there's been so much birding activity in this particular area that you might wanna, you might wanna have to look through to see where Godfrey is in Alton. So let's say, let's just say for, this, for the purpose that we are, uh, we've expanded this and we are, we are actually walking around Lewis and Clark College campus. Okay, so let's just make, let's just go from there. So once you've got your location, and we'll work out the details on that. Once you get to location, then you go ahead and we know it's February. It's February eighth, twenty twenty one, and then you have to decide if it's the scenario I just mentioned, and you're sitting there and you're watching birds, and it's the thing you want to do. Now there's there's the, the, the th uh, different categories. If you're traveling, and that means either by car, by walking, hiking, uh, then you would click on the traveling. If you're sitting at a location and your specific reason for sitting there is to see the birds 
that are being attracted. And you can translate this into sitting in your backyard. But if you're sitting there and that's your purpose, birding, then you would push stationary. Uh, if you are working in the garden and you happen to see some birds, you might want to push incidental. And of course, uh, we won't go into too much detail, but if you discover that uh, by joining eBird, you can go back in history and you have details about birding hikes you've done in the past, you can go to historical. So for this purpose, let's just say, and I'll change this a little bit. Let's just say that uh, we started at the Montessori and we're gonna walk around the campus. So we're gonna travel. And then we wanna go and down to, right? You can see, I'm already there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's just say that it's, uh, let's just say that it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, let's just say we went for an hour. All right, so there we go. We got duration there. And then the distance, uh, we were really energetic today. We actually traveled, uh, 0.75 miles and uh, all around the campus. And of course, if you're driving, uh, for instance, if you're going up and down Riverwinds Way and you go around and out Red School Road, uh, you may end up with as much as 12 to 15 miles or even more on something like that. And so we'll just pretend that uh, uh, Emily and Ramona and I are all walking together at the Lewis and Clark campus. So there's three of us. There we go. All right. And of course, now we're ready. If you want to make comment, this area called checklist comments allows you to do anything you want from temperature to, to, uh, to uh, precipitation. Uh, you can say um, uh, that um, this was a particularly good day. Anything you'd like to do to kind of personalize that or to give information that will be useful uh, in the interpretation of the data later. All right. So we continue. Ready. So here's, we, here's what we have in terms of a checklist is birds arranged in frequency. Now, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. You can arrange it uh, taxonomically. You can arrange it alphabetically. But I found over the years that uh, just arranging it by percentages in the future allows the birds you are most likely to see to come up first. So let's just go through. And one of the things that um, I found is that the eBird program has these zones and they decide whether or not a bird should be in a zone by historical data. In the area that we talk about in, in this part of Madison County, they don't recognize the fact that black cap chickadees are very often present. So we'll just start by saying that you may have to go to report a black cap chickadee, which I lost it. So type in chickadee and it'll allow you to get more specific and actually it'll give you the choices and then, then you can go down and actually highlight the black cap, not the combination. We don't know what it is. And so Whenever you see the orange need details, it means that the eBird program has decided for you that that's not a usual bird. They don't bird. believe you. They don't, <laughs> yeah. And sometimes on some really rare birds that you see, they will follow up with a, a monitor and uh, mm -hmm. that person will actually e uh, email you oh, wow. and ask for details. And I've had that happen uh, several times. And then you have to decide, well, am I that positive it was there? Or, you know, I'm positive it's a black cap chickadee. And we only saw one, so we're going to leave it at that. But when we get the need details, we have to say we've at least thought it over and we are going to submit that as, as a complete one. Now we're going to go down the list and we're just going to, this is a pretend list. So we're really, really going to uh, uh, look at, each of the, the each of the birds and just decide whether or not we would have seen these if we'd really been doing it. It's very common that we would see cardinals. Cardinals very, very rarely are, are just one or two. So let's make it five. Let's make it five. And then we go down. We know we don't want to put black cap um, slash or chickadee Carolina blacks cap. So now crows. Yep. There were three overhead. Okay. And by the way, if you are an experienced birder and you hear 
the birds, you have to make a decision. If you are positive that the sound you're hearing is what you're reporting, that's not a big problem. All right. So everybody would know a crow, would know a crow. So we heard them in the woods and we're going to count them, even though we didn't see them. And then we go down and uh, we did not see any morning doves, although we could have. We keep going down and we keep going down and on a trunk of a tree right at the woods edge was a northern flicker. So we're going to click that. And on this one, we noticed that this particular woodpecker, the northern flicker, had, and we noticed that this particular northern flicker had a mustache. <laughs> and males have mustaches. So we're going to go down to there and we're going to say, and it's an adult male, by putting this one right there. Now, this number and the number up in the uh, actual uh, list have to match. You can't put two down there and one up there. So anyway, we'll go on down from there. And now I'm going to scroll, and that's by doing this right here. Okay, and let's continue on. And uh, we, uh, this is the time of year when there's goldfinch galore. And so we're going to say that there's a... Actually, a feeder has been put outside that Montessori area, and um, there's as many as 12 goldfinch. And uh, well, here we go. While we were standing there looking and counting the gold goldfinch, um, by golly, a red tail hawk came over. And so we're going to put that in, and then go on down, and we're going to scroll. And uh, we've just about run out of time, and we've got some other things we need to do. Uh, we're going to have to leave uh, the uh, campus, and so um, the, uh, the only other thing we saw before we had to wrap it up was some white-throated sparrows, another one that uh, comes to your feeder a lot if you're feeding in this area. So we saw seven of those. And again, this is fictitious, and uh, I will delete this so that it doesn't show up as something that I actually did. But anyway, when we get to this point and we know that we're finished with this particular list, we go over and it asks you if this is a complete list. You say yes. And you submit the list. All right. And this shows that on Monday, the 8th of February at 11 a.m., we were at Wilson Clark College. We had seven species. There's the seven species. Let's say, just for the sake of argument, that we actually went back to Lewis and Clark and submitted another list. Very quickly, I'm going to show you that a shortcut to, you don't have to go all the way over to what we did before, and we can just go to the same location, the so same location and date. We obviously want the same location, but we fudged a little bit on this, and we're going to really just go to the eight after February, mm -hmm. and we will get that signal now. Let's, find, let's just go this way so we don't uh, run into that problem. Let's just say that we had a checklist from the day before, and we want to submit that while we're at it. Then, again, we're, we're stationary for this time. And so you can see that what we've got then is that uh, the opportunity to use that same location and same date and then change the date. And that gives you a shortcut to that. So once again, we go through, and now that we've established a little bit, look at what comes up as 10% or more frequent. The birds we saw, you know, in the past come up and it shows that there's a, there's a likelihood that these birds will be seen. And it, the program kind of decides for you frequency. Okay, we can just go through and, uh, why don't we just put a one by every one of those and uh, complete that segment of, of reporting. We go over to uh, complete and we submit this list as well. Let me reemphasize this in, in closing that this great bird count that's coming up gives the opportunity for individuals to report what they're seeing in their backyards. Once again, 
According to the Audubon Society and the Cornell Lab, it's the most underreported data in the world. So it would be it would be a great asset to them in terms of studying migratory patterns, habits, feeding habits, and all that. So let me again encourage you to take part in that and then continue with the eBird program in the future.